Uh, but hopefully, someday. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. But people get less sensitive. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's never gonna happen. That's never gonna happen. <laughs> that, that time has passed. Uh, yeah. So anyway, wherever you are, Tony, please don't say anything inappropriate. Yep. <laughs> Now he called me just before we came here. He's uh, coming tomorrow to train, oh, yeah. and he's training. Yeah, he uh, train yeah, he cannot train. Not today. I mean, not today, but tomorrow. But his knee is bad, isn't it? No. <laughs> <laughs> he actually writes now that he he wonders where he can see the. The, 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 the podcast I'm usually in the studio so where can I see uh. this <laughs> and just above where he's written this that's the link to where he can see it <laughs> well done Tony yeah. <laughs> IT professional yeah. Tony Seven I don't hate on that I don't no. hate on no. that no no Now, but he's coming tomorrow for the uh, for the sparring, I think, and then he's doing your session in the evening, like six o'clock. Okay, okay. And he got a new dog. Yeah. Uh. It's growing so fast. He still have the rabbits. Yeah, okay. and they're like best friends. <laughs> have you seen on his stories? No. <laughs> it's so funny. They're like they're like best friends. They're hanging out and yeah. Like, yeah. KK. KK. Yep. <laughs> Uh, in Swedish, KK is, uh, you know, the yeah. word <laughs> KK? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you later, I'll <laughs> yeah. tell you later. Yeah. After hours. Yeah. Okay, 20 seconds. All right, welcome to Tjena Kompis Studio. And today it's in English because Teta, your Swedish is uh, not that good. Not yet. that good. Welcome, my name is Richard, and uh, together with uh, Teta, and then on this side, Valdo and Ralph, we're going to talk about a life on the mat. Uh, your uh, your your life, Valdo, and your Teta, your your life uh, as well, uh, and your, the choice you made to be a uh, jiu instructor or martial arts instructor, and how that had a, has affected your lives, maybe both uh, mentally and physically, and maybe even financially. Was it a good choice or not? I don't mm. know. <laughs> So uh, if you're watching this, uh, please let us know by maybe writing something in the comments so we know that you can hear us. And then if you have any questions to Teta or to Valdo, then um, write them and they will probably answer. Hopefully they will answer. <laughs> I'll try are, to. Are you answering any questions? I'm answering questions. All right. That's awesome. This is the second time in the studio, Valdo. We, yeah. We had a lot has happened since. Yeah. <laughs> we, we upgraded the studio a little bit. There's a Shanna Compass logo now behind me and Teta. I like that. Yeah. And that we're was also the only thing that changed between the first and the second time. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, that's the only thing that happened. No. <laughs> right. We actually managed to um, get these um, video podcasts now as an audio. We have a very talented uh, new worker here in the reception. Her name is Ebba, and she's um, she's experienced in making, you know, like uh, editing uh, video and now also podcasts. So now we're on Spotify, so you can listen to the to this on Spotify as well. An old episode as well. Yes. Old episodes. Can she edit out my voice? Because it's still uh, kind of creepy to hear yourself. <laughs> <laughs> like, right. I don't like my voice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably she can. Good. All right. Good. All right. So this is the first day in the camp. How has the first day been, Teta? It's amazing. Like, especially for me that coming from, I'm living in Norway, but you couldn't come here for like, yeah, almost yeah. a couple of years now. Yeah. Yeah, it's two years. Yeah. Basically. One, what, two what, 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 you were, you were not, not you, you were not here in 2020. Yeah. But then 2019. I was here. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two years. Wow. So it's yeah. been two wow. years, and like you meet any, everyone that you meet in the, by the stairs or walking around, like, hi, nice yeah. to see you. Like, uh, but long and you time, can hug again. You yeah. can hug people again. Yeah. So, so it, it is amazing. Like, but again, still embarrassed that I came late, a little bit late. No. You know, mm -hmm. I don't want to give. 
give a bad reputation for the Brazilians, you know, being late. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your, first class, you know? your first yeah. class was great. Everybody <laughs> loved your first class. Right? Yeah. I know, man. I know. Yeah. You, 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 you need to blame it on the electric cars. Renato. Yeah. Renato, of Hanato. course. Hanato. Yeah. Of course. Hanato. If yeah. you guys know Renato, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. For, for those that, um, the pe those people that are listening in that uh, don't know you and, you know, what you have done in, in martial arts. Could you give us um, a short summary in 30 yeah, seconds? Like I, Who's Teta? Just basically, I'm, I'm born and raised in Brazil and I came um, to Norway basically in 2006, but I moved there in 2008, basically. 2006, mm. seven, I was going back and forth. And then started moved to Moved because the, of love? Of course, man. Yeah. So I wasn't getting involved in yeah. that. So I wasn't getting involved. <laughs> so, but I mean, and, but was it kind of like, of course there was a girl that's, really important piece but i think a, a little bit different difference on my story is that many times people travel abroad to open academy the business plan and things like that right so with me of course i met my girl and i start to train there Hanat was living there already and i start to train there the guys that were there became my friends first they became my students, and then afterwards we became uh, tra uh, business, business partners, partners yeah, right? right? So it was almost the other way around. Usually, people have business partners that become students and friends afterwards. So we meet for the for the from the um, on the business partners that I have today. Still, is the same guys that we became friends first, and then they became my students, and then afterwards we became uh, business partners. So I think that's something that's been working well from these fifteen years. 15 years 15 now. Years. Yeah. 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 Have you, could you ever have imagined that when you were living, growing up in Brazil, that you were going to live in Norway? Never. I never no. wanted to leave Brazil. I never wanted. Libor yeah. left to uh -huh. America. Uh -huh. and he always wanted me to go there with him. Uh -huh. and, and he went to Florida at the time. And I, I never and Liborio wanted, is your teacher, Libor, of course. Libor is yeah. my teacher. Yeah. Libor is my teacher. He's a black belt on the Carson Gracie. And, and he moved to start the American top team at the time. So he wanted me to go there and be working there with him because he always he was a guy that was always motivating me, putting me to work in the gym and helping me with so many things. And yeah, I, I can't even tell how many how much he helped me with all of this. And once he moved to America, I, I, he always invited me. And actually, for some time, I lost contact with him because of this because I was embarrassed and I couldn't say no to him anymore. No. And then afterwards, when I moved from Brazil to Norway, I was like, what is he going to think about it? You know, like, shit, I didn't go with him and I moved to the other side. Uh -huh. like, okay. that's to weird. the other side. <laughs> <laughs> Across yeah. the ocean to the other yeah. Actually, direction. you got a new nickname here. Tony is, of course, watching. Hi, Tony. Tony. And he says, uh, the Brazilian who took the north. King, King of, of the north. <laughs> uh, Tony, yeah. sweetheart, man. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so I never wanted to live real. I'm, like... I was I was I was good there, you know. I kind of had my reputation, my career, and like my things there. Mm -hmm. Born and raised in the same place, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but I think that you know, life they have some different moments in life that mm -hmm. you have to follow to different things, and that's where I end up. Do you think I, you're gonna stay in Norway? Have you uh, ever considered? I, I, I never thought. It's hard to say. Like. I mean, I have a I have a really big connection with Rio, that place there. I love it. Mm -hmm. I have family that I love there. I have fr friends that I love it as family, and and I have a different connection with that place. Right, I was born and raised there. I know that I wake up and I know how the weather is gonna be. You know, I look at the direction of the wind and I know everything. I grew up there, surfing and training and with all these friends and everything around there. That's also a long story that I have there. Again, telling these stories, it feels like I lived a hundred lives when I start to think like <laughs> yeah. what happened there and then what happened yeah. when I moved mm. and everything on these 15 years here, especially like was something that trip, like we we're building up here, the sport guys, you guys are veterans on this year. So you guys know so long ago how different it is from the, pe the different that it is from what people have today, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So even here, it's almost like I see history repeating. Mm -hmm. Everything that happened there when I grew up, most, a lot of things that happened there when I grew up, I see things repeating here. Uh, on this story, like growing, the sport growing, different things that happens. Mm -hmm. But, um, but uh, yeah, I never wanted to leave and just happen, just things just start to happen. I was very fortunate that I had this opportunity to let things happen in a way, take some courses of actions and mm -hmm. let things happen in a way, right? So I was very fortunate in my life. I can't complain. I can't take it for granted at all. I don't take it for granted one day in my life, you know? 
we are very happy that you <laughs> decided to live in Norway so because uh, <laughs> then it's easy for us and for me to to get to to see you. Yeah. yeah. How uh, bad do you miss the surfing? It, I was just talking to to to, to David the other day, and like she was like, yeah, because what you think like life changes and like I I'm pretty okay, you know. I'm still like. I still like to compete myself, talking about competing and training. It's a little bit harder to train as you train when you're just competing, right? Mm. I still like, like to compete. I'm still not in peace so with this, you know, I'm still gonna be competing. But it's not like the same way as before that you wanted to fight everything or wanted this title and that title. For me, just to be competing and doing my best there, you know, and maybe win, that's that's good enough. Mm. Uh, and I'm, it's almost like, I like that. That's my almost like my selfish side. I want to do it. I want to compete. I want to do my best. I want to perform. I know that I can perform. But in a way, nowadays I'm happier with like uh, thank you for help than good job. Mm -hmm. What you done, you know. Mm -hmm. More happy with see my mm -hmm. my students going competing and and doing well and coming back and appreciating everything that we've done together and and seeing them following their way. Then like yeah, good job you did well. You know. Mm -hmm. So I like more to be this one guy telling good job guys and working mm -hmm. you know yeah but it's still uh if there's one thing that i that i really miss because i can't i can't complain just kind of is beautiful it's a beautiful country i have Not a lot of friends i have a lot of friends here you know i can't complain Crazy. yeah so so i mean it's hard to say was I, I love both places i have two homes in a way but if there's one thing that i miss <laughs> that would be like the, the surfing, surfing. Yeah, the surfing yeah. the, and I can't organize myself to go to surf trips very often and things like that for mm -hmm. some time so starting to organize it again she, she just pushed me like yeah go organize some I just talked to, by coincidence my friend is, uh, is messaging me messaging me on, on the way here and they're planning a trip to El Salvador oh nice then, yeah yeah let's talk afterwards yeah. let's plan a trip to Costa Rica uh, maybe go there <laughs> maybe go Valdo. there You've been uh, just coming home from Costa Rica. Um, if 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 somebody's watching and never met you, can you do the same as Teta did, like a short uh, summary of uh, who is Valdo? Yeah, I was not born and raised in Rio. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was uh, born and raised uh, outside of Stockholm in uh, Södertälje. Mm. And um, how do you say Södertälje with a nice American accent? Södertälje. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Södertälje. Yeah. Um, and. Um, I started martial arts when I was about four years old. Mm -hmm. And then I stuck to that, much mm -hmm. to my parents' uh, disbelief. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but but that actually was what I chose. And then I did that, and pretty much every martial art there was to try. Mm -hmm. And eventually uh, we got these illegal VHS tapes with, with the UFC and this skinny dude who was born and raised in Rio mm -hmm. beat the crap out of everybody and we're like, but he's not doing spinning kicks. What the hell? <laughs> we need to do that. And mm. and we looked it up in January 95, Omar opened up what was eventually supposed to be Pancreas Gym. And I was the first guy through the door. I was, I'm in, mm. this is it. And then I survived the first class. <laughs> and, and I think that made me stay. Mm. <laughs> not everybody did. Not everybody. And now you're here and now I'm pretty here. much. Yeah. 25 years later no 35 years later sorry yeah. a lot of years later a lot of years a later a lot of years later yeah. yeah yeah so um and i did pretty much everything in in jiu jitsu except uh well except the career and the reputation and the winning competitions and shit i didn't do that part but mm. i did everything else. i was a lot of of uh good job that was my i was the mm. good job guy i told people <laughs> good job i never got the good job that much i i did the good job thing that was good i remember you competing yeah, a little like, bit. Like uh, I remember Darren Rio training hard, man. That time, oh, yeah. that year where we met, two thousand six. Yeah, where we met at. We were like, Psh, yeah, Ax. yeah. That was that was. You guys was met the first time in two thousand six. Two thousand six. He was yeah. in Brazil, yeah. and okay. he, he was dating Debbie, <laughs> <laughs> and, and also uh, beating the crap out of me. Nah, nah, but that nah. was a, that was a good sparring though. That was that was super nice, man. Like that was really, and, and it's so amazing. Like everybody, like. Um, where, where is he from? Sweden. Sweden. Well, you got your jiu jitsu in Sweden, Norway, and like asking. You what that. time did you get move to Norway? You said. 2000. First time was 2006. 2006 was the first time. So right after we so, met. Yeah. So right yeah. after. So, okay. I, so I came in January 1st. Uh, yeah, end of January, beginning of February, right after the Europeans. I was oh, there. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right I after remember. the Europeans. No, so we I, actually met there. Maybe we met there. We met there. We met yeah. there, yeah. And Bacchus. then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then. 
the summer here, you guys went there for the world. Yes. There was a Copa yes. du Monde world. Yeah. You guys were there training. I did both. both. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It was two, comp two, two competitions. It was one weekend Copa du Monde, the second weekend yeah. was uh, the so world. So then you were in, because I was in Brazil training um, after competing in Uruguay. Then we went to Brazil, training at Brazilian top team yeah. and with Marcelo Yogi in 2002. But then you were, you were you training at Brazilian top team? Yes. 2002. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Awesome. Okay. You were like almost the head instructor then. Yeah, yeah. As soon as I got my black belt and, yeah. and Libor left. Libor mm -hmm. left, Murilo started teaching MMA and, 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 and I was the head coach for... Taking care of the, yeah. the BJJ there. Yeah. He yeah. had a reputation. <laughs> I was a lot in Rio that time. I'm like, I don't go there. That guy's gonna eat okay. me. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Which right. year was uh, Ralashvig? 2004 or 5? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 I think 2004 or 5. That's it. First time Sweden got and, introduced and I, seen, and I haven't seen the show <laughs> and I came here and it was... It's gonna never open. Yeah. Right? In, was it Malmo or...? 2005, Malmo, when I... Okay, uh, and then 2006? It was also Malmo. It was also, mm. also Malmo. It was like the and first years of the competitions here in Sweden. Everybody, yeah. everybody's calling me, Ben Stiller, Ben Stiller. Ben Stiller. Ben Stiller. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the hell, Ben Stiller? Then they showed me this program, yeah. the, the TV show, you know? I must say. Uh, <laughs> okay. like, he really sold yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. I, I forgot, <laughs> you were actually coaching against me a lot in these competitions. Maybe, maybe. You were coaching Hanato in 2005. Hanato and... used to go to the tournament and said, I, people are not gonna forget. So he used to put these uh, black power of Afro yeah. Yeah. and these big glasses. Yeah. And, uh, he started yeah. to warm up there, and the kids used to come to him to take pictures. <laughs> 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 like, yeah. <laughs> what was your view of like uh, gringos coming to like to Brazil to compete and stuff like that? What? Me, yeah, I always loved it. I always liked it. Yeah, but like the general consensus in the in the like in, in the gym and like when people came to train and people felt threatened at, at early times. People used to feel feel threatened a little bit. You know, you, you need to go through a kind of like fire test or something like mm -hmm. that. I need to go to the fire and then they would like, it was a little bit of... I think she'd ask the gringo in this case. Yeah, yeah definitely. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but, but it's no, interesting to hear what they had, like, yeah. what they said about yeah, our back. So that I like would be... <laughs> like, for me, I was, I was always interested because at the same time, I I always traveled a lot, even like, yeah, before I came here, I always traveled a lot and I, ha I had the... I was speaking English already too. It's not many, not many people speak English there. So for me, it was mm. a, also a way to practice my English mm. a little bit, talking to people that were coming there. Uh, but and especially if the guy had a little bit of talent, it's not like okay, you have a talent, you come here. They at that time people wanted yeah. to break you if you come yeah. there. <laughs> you guys know that. Yeah. You know? I know that. Yeah, <laughs> you guys know that. People would like to. Break How you a important bit. was um, if we're like, we kind of. The topic Narrate of today a is, is is a little bit about you know y your choice of being in in the martial arts yeah. and you know the fin financial side maybe a little bit. How important was the Gringos for the Brazilians at that time it, regarding you know getting you know the opportunity mm. to travel maybe or seminars or actually paying for training at it, the gyms? Yeah, it was. I, I don't think it was. I don't was not much. In my my case, there I, I haven't seen that much. Would they have one or other that would? But you you would see that almost like you guys kind you guys are trying to kind of take advantage of him. Mm -hmm. It was not much very serious thing. So it, it kind of like you would look bad if you like trying to take advantage and just getting money or get the guy to pay you something or something like that just like just being friends with the guy because you want to go away you know mm -hmm. so there was a little bit of this in the beginning mm -hmm. uh, from where i was so but then and then at the same time i had a couple of serious people that you could reach if they wanted the seminar if they wanted uh, to open a gym or something like that right but it would be one or other that would be trying to take advantage and get close mm -hmm. just to try to get something out of it you know mm -hmm. But, but that would also go from the other side. It was also depending on the gringo who went there. Because a lot of of, of us, the gringos who went there, went there to actually learn. That's yeah. true. To yeah. actually pursue some form of, of dream or passion or, or be like, shit, I need to learn this. I want to mm -hmm. go to the roots for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. So I think that also gives the signal that I'm honest about this. But also, there were some groups be like, "Hi, I can pay you four thousand dollars. Give me a black belt." And you're exactly. like, "Not really, man. Mm. Really though." Or, "Okay, give me four thousand. Here's your purple belt. Goodbye." <laughs> so well, you know, it, it depends kind of what you came with, also mm -hmm. depending on how you wanted to be received. And I think a lot of, of during my era from like '99, I think was the first time I went to Rio. I think so, until like 2008. 
those 10 years that that actually is, uh, I would say that is, you know, I could count on one hand people would be like douchebags mm. from the gringo side. And that's approximately the same on the Brazilian side receiving mm -hmm. them. It would be about the person who met those guys. Mm -hmm. But the rest would be good people on both sides because we came there with honest intentions trying to be like, hey, shit, you're really mm -hmm. good at this and you're mm -hmm. kind of my idol. C could I learn from you? And mm -hmm. people were like, yeah, I'm flattered, you know? So it was, it, I think it was a good mix mm -mm. pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were you prepared for like how hard they were going to go after you? I like... had no clue. <laughs> no. <laughs> Honestly, I was a little bit prepared for, for, for the violence because I had trained with, with, uh, well, you know, who I trained with here. So, mm -hmm. so, uh, I, I was used to tapping. Yeah. I, knew, mm -hmm. I knew how that worked. I just didn't understand the, it's like Will Ferrell said, Ooh, that escalated quickly <laughs> because I came with, with one of the few things that I brought with me, even as a, a white belt or blue belt was, I was decently good at leg locks pretty early and they were not always no. super popular. <laughs> and, and I was also at that time before Daryl Golar went to your place and, mm. and that time wrestling wasn't really that good in Brazil. And I was a, I'm a mediocre wrestler but compared to to what was the norm then i was a decently good wrestler so i would take people down and and i wouldn't pass their guard and then i'd leg lock them once and mm. then i would be will ferrell that is <laughs> <laughs> because then i would submit it like yeah. i'm like okay so that's the mm. price you pay we get that mm. Uh, mm. so that was that was special yeah um ralph um we, we heard their story now. Can you tell us a little bit about your story in, in no, regarding this is, this to... This isn't about me or me. It's no, but I, just, it, I think it's... like Because what I'm aiming for is we all spend a lot of time on the mats um, from an early age. And I want to know how this has affected us. Um, so short, like short. Can you tell us a little bit you about... you uh, Ralph is short. Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Worked into that one. Yeah. Um, no, um, what is my story? I started uh, martial arts because my brother started doing it. And then I just followed his footsteps. Whatever he, he played handball, I play handball. He did martial arts, I do martial arts. And then I just competing for a very long time, um, becoming an instructor, uh, competing, 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 and just having... I mean, I tried to be professional for, for a while, but at the same time, I had like this career of doing programming and stuff like that on the side. So I... I've never been able to commit to anything fully. I've, that's been my entire life. I've never done anything 100%, 100%. Like I used to see people on like, like the UFC show and stuff like that. I'm like I live in my car and I do only this. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. I've, I've never done it like that, but I always wanted it in some way. But Your never... car looks like you live in it sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I've, I've, I've just been competing and uh, never went to Brazil, for instance. Like, like that's one of those things. Like if you're really serious, you have to go to Brazil and train and stuff like that but i you went to the states instead yeah. a yeah. lot yeah. yeah yeah i went to the because I, like I when, when i love competing when when we were like when you were you were five years younger than me so so i went but then you were like maybe a little bit too young or you were not like mm. into the sport as much as then and then kind of the shift went from brazil because of the world championships moving to los angeles and then so i think there was a shift a little bit about where gringos would go um, yeah uh, so instead of going to to rio they, they, you go to to um San Diego yeah. instead, oh, and, yeah. and then or Las Vegas. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was just about around that around those years I started competing because I think my first competition was same as you. It was two thousand three in Sweden here in Malmo or something. Yeah, I think it was the first Swedish Open. Yeah, so I think that was my first BJJ competition, and I don't remember when they moved like made like like started competing more in America, but two thousand seven Worlds. Yeah, yeah. Was that was the first, first year. Yeah, first year. Yeah. 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 So I think mm. I had like a kind of a white belt, blue belt, kind of towards purple, and then I started going to like the Europeans and started uh, maybe going to American competing mm. worlds like that. But uh, yeah, no, my story is just I've, I've been competing and just uh, instructing for for a really long time and just um, trying to learn a lot from these two. <laughs> yeah. So we all spend a lot of time on the mat. So I'm curious to see or to hear uh, how this has affected us or you yeah. so uh, i mean it, of, obviously in a good way because we kept doing it but also <laughs> there's been of course ups and downs um can you tell us a little bit about your your best ups and some of your downs Teta? yes mm -hmm. yeah i'm like you know it'd be sometimes people take a picture on the beach with an acai nice sunset and they put 
BJJ lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay then. Let me show you another picture. <laughs> you don't know what you talk about. You know, like so. Uh, one thing is like, for me, like. I don't remember my again i just i was fortunate enough enough to be able to let things go their course in a way of course i had to take some make some sacrifices make some choices and things like that but uh, for, for me it's everything it's just everything I, it's, that's what i do from morning to evening that's what put faith, food on my table for my family and and i mean i try to and like it's a never-end story of you know learning and loving and hating and like I have to deal with people that you have to love mm -hmm. and hate people too, you know, like it's all of these and that that's the thrill I, I feel a little bit of of when were you when you were you able to kind of live off Jiu Jitsu? In a way, back in Brazil I was like I had some kind of sponsors and I was always teaching uh together with Libori. Libori always helped me a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um so I actually like I worked a little bit with my father back in Rio growing up, but just to he just wanted to put me to work and so to know the value of work in a way uh but i was always having jujitsu and these things in the side mm -hmm. so i never done anything very different than that actually so no that's I'd kind of like, unique you know it's like uh, working really body trying to and, help as much as possible and sponsors and in, in a way like i used to live there and i used to have a sponsor the place that i could eat every day a couple of times a day i would have a sponsor that would give me geese the other guy would shape the board for me and always like i had a lot a lot of benefits in a way you know and like the other guys would give me clothes and these and the other, the other guy pays the 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 fee for the tournament and you go and fight and you do this and that and blah blah blah, blah. Mm. so i was always very fortunate to be and i used to live with my parents of course the house we have like we had we live had a good place to live and so it, it, it can, can backfire a little bit can hold you back a little bit right because you have mm. everything Mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. i think one th one thing also to move abroad move away from the house move away from rio is to start my own thing maybe mm -hmm. you know from with everything with mm -hmm. life and with everything you know how old were you in 2006 2025 when i m mm -hmm. went there first yeah. okay mm -hmm. so and so then w when i asked like um, how long have you been able to live off jiu-jitsu do you mean that that's been by teaching Jiu Jitsu or going to seminars or have you also been this. like the, all of this? All of like, this, yeah. all of this, yeah. all of this, right? So teaching in an academy, but, but not going to not teaching at seminars. Yeah, but not before we really accomplished and after many years uh, having a gym, having a team, making mm -hmm. the team grow, hard work in there. Mm -hmm that I'm kind of can pass by, you know, with the with the academies and teams and like, of course, I still have to go I like I love to do this too, but I still have to go to seminars. I still have to try to do workshops. I still have to try to do a private here, private there. Mm -hmm. I still have to work, and I work there. I take care of the academy, of course, with my business partner. I could I can't see me doing that? What I did from that time without them, right? I learned so much from them on the other side of the business and all of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you consider yeah. yourself a businessman now or a jujitsu instructor, like or a, or a mix of both? I, I think it's a mix of both, both right? In a way, like it's the same thing. Like, once you start your career training and you want to compete and things like you, you have to be a little bit of everything. You have to be a little bit of a nutritionist. You have to be a little bit of a strength and conditioning coach. You have to try to seek these other knowledges. Mm. You know, you need to know how to manage your money. You need to know how to sell yourself. And you don't have actually money to invest in a nutritionist. You don't have money to invest in a strength and conditioning coach. And then maybe you have a friend that's helping you. So you have to, you know, step up to catch up with him because he's helping you. He's not giving you anything for, for free or granted, you know, right? Mm -hmm. So you need to kind of try to understand a little bit of everything already you know that that's how it, that's how that's how I, I, it went for me you know that's how it goes to today you try to go look for and like in a way like okay you can't narrow yourself even though like if I've let's say that I found my place I'm gonna be doing jiu-jitsu and like of course you, you should expect more of yourself right you should expect that you can double it up or do something else at the same time you know to use the same dedication and all of that and that's what I say even to my to my to my students you know that once you pursue this especially here in, in Scandinavia in Norway or whatever you know that's a place that you can have an education you can have a career you can have a job you can have a business and you still train jiu -jitsu. you can be good at jiu-jitsu and train jiu-jitsu right everything that you're the place that you're born in on that you're born in like gives you is what what in many different places you need to find someone that's gonna help you with all of that right mm -hmm. 
So all these projects and things like that, they try yeah. to help give you an education, give you some another language or, or this or that, and start to help you. You guys were born with this uh, here in this country, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you always try to, but of course you, you try to, you end up doing better what you're good at, right? Mm -hmm. They just do more what you're good at or you to like better, you know? And then you, the, the other things you have to keep catching up with the things. Have you been strategic, strategic in your mindset like of, okay, I need to do this first, but if I get to this, then I'm able to do maybe take the next step. How, have you been? Are you a strategic <laughs> mind like that? Not, or? not really. Not in this case. I just, f f in a way, I had my partners to do this. Mm -hmm. What I wanted, what I was doing, of course, was involved in this part. But my thing is to spend the time on the mat and spread my, try to share my knowledge, talk to people, try to sell like what I, not only what Jiu Jitsu is, but how much I love that, you know, I want people to understand how much, what the passion that I have, how much I love that, you know, and mm -hmm. then it, it sells for itself. You don't need to, you know, use yeah. big words or, or mm -hmm. try to convince anybody, you know, if you do it properly, be honest doing that, you know, and there's people understand where they're going to get, understand that it's a lifelong journey, you know, understand that I'm not doing this for you to get your black belt and that's it. I want you to bring this to your life, to the rest of your life. Even yeah. if you mm -hmm. stop, I have a lot of people that stop training, how many people stop training, come back, and still, they still have that in their mind, you know, they mm. still, yeah, I would like mm, to go I, back. And yeah, and I that. remember mm -hmm. when I was training, yeah, I, was I felt so, so good. good yeah. that, yeah. and, you know, yeah. and in the end of the day, like even like the body says all the time, like, it's not about the titles that people have, it's not about the fights, the thrill, blah, blah, blah. It, it, it is the community that it's built into the academy, you know, it's the people, the friends that you make there. Yeah. And another thing that I see too is like, for example, talking about competition, another aspect of the competition, uh, is besides the thrill of the competition, to be there competing, get into combat, whatever, right? In, in, in this time that everything is kind of like easy to get, right, to ac access. You, you get your phone, you get this and you get that. For me, most of the people here, the things are kind of easy to access, right? And people are looking for experience more, right? Yeah. So especially seeing the tournament, you go, you set the goal for the tournament. In so many weeks, you're gonna be traveling. You you know that you're gonna travel, have a trip with, with your teammates, you know? Mm -hmm. And you have that weeks to prepare a little bit, to focus a little bit. So you, you give yourself a, this experience of training and you're training with, I know that you're gonna compete. I know that, so you're all helping each other. And then you have a nice trip. And then maybe you go there and you lose in your first match. But then you're upset and you feel that you're upset. You feel that you want to go back. You feel that you want to train more and you see your training partner winning, right? Mm -hmm. So you know that you could have done that too, maybe, you know? So I didn't want to do it again. You go back and train. All these experiences, I think that's that's, that's the, life. That's, that's mm -hmm. the value that you have, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. It's not the new gi. It's not that I'm showing you this move <laughs> and that move, mm -hmm. that move on the on, with the gi. So these experiences are things that generates a lot of value for what we do also. Yeah. Even though it, you w don't want to go and compete, but there's someone there that wants to go and you're there like helping mm. it, all these experiences, all these feelings, you know? But I think that's that's very yeah. valuable, at what you do. Yeah. How about you, Waldo? Uh, can you, when Teta talks, can you feel, you know, the this, this similarities or how, how has your thoughts been choosing a, more, a life on the, on the mat and martial arts? Honestly, there are a lot of similarities to the point where I had, I grew up having what I needed. Mm. We're not rich in any way, but we weren't even poor either. Mm. And, and I had parents who were like, okay, you, you want to do this. Uh, when I was a kid who supported that. Mm. So I did. And, and I kind of started doing things on my own pretty early. Like I started to get extra jobs when I was like 13 or 14, maybe even earlier. Like I do shopping carts at a mall and just go look for the ones in the parking lot and you, give you, them back. You, you throw like, everything into a shopping cart yeah, and then you run as fast as possible. No, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, things like that. And, mm -hmm. and I started putting all that money, honestly, on martial arts. Okay. Like, okay. I need, I need to buy this new uh, samurai sword or whatever. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> but it was, Pretty that soon, excitement when you had some money and then you went to Sviaveg and exactly. the Buddha fitness store and then like <laughs> walking like, around in there and like, oh, this is a sword. I, exactly. I need this. I need a sword. <laughs> do, do I need this? Yeah, I need it. So so it was pretty quick that I started using even my dreams about being an adult and having my own finance and everything so that I could do martial arts. Mm -hmm. Martial arts back then were like, a, you know, a headband and, and swords and shit. But but just the fact that I wanted to do martial arts and I wanted to work towards doing martial arts, mm -hmm. that was pretty early. Pretty early, okay. Mm -hmm. and, and then um, life happened 
and, and I kept doing it. It's like the one thing that I actually kept doing. Mm. Um, sometimes only three times a week and sometimes twice or three times daily, mm. depending on, and depending on new martial arts, if like shit, this academy closed or, oh, okay, so Kung Fu is the new shit, let's do that. Mm -hmm. So it changed back and forth, but I just stayed on with that. And I did mm -hmm. other sports and around it, play basketball. I'm Hispanic, so I didn't get too tall. So that, that died. And, uh, you know, everything around that was like, did moving. you ever give up on the idea of a martial art? Because I mean, I know your story a little bit and there's been, you know, as, as for once. everyone, you did give up once? once. All right. Okay. I gave up in, in uh, the end of like 2000 and I think it was 14. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in, in, in the end of 2014, I started giving up um, because I had already chosen many years before that, that I would do martial arts. That's going to be my profession. I quit. I quit med school. I quit law school. I quit civil engineering, and I got scholarships and shit. And my dad was like, "You're an idiot," but but I quit that because I wanted to do martial arts. And, and when you say, sorry to interrupt, when you say I want to do martial art, was that with the goal to I want to have an academy and that's going to be my profession? I want to run an academy and that's going to earn my salary. Was that like the goal, or did it, was that bigger than that? It's okay, like, I want to do martial arts. Like, like, like there's yeah. a, everything around it. Yeah. I, I need to be a jiu-jitsu businessman. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it's, yeah. it's literally you, Do you, you want to be a famous martial artist? Is that what that really, goal? Or? Not really. Not then. Now, yes, because I'm old and I got a big belly. But, but <laughs> then, no, not really. Um, I just wanted to do martial arts. It, mm -hmm. it was like a lot of people use the cliche, martial arts saved my life. I'm one of those guys because it did. Because everything else was boring. And I know that I could probably had been successful like you said and in, mm. in doing law school or med school or whatever yeah but i don't think i would have been happy um so i wanted to do martial arts and and then things happened there in 2014 and and like everything i had worked for kind of died it was like okay so this academy folds and this new place i was going to they're like yeah but we don't want to do that part of it and we're done with we don't want to do this and i was like i'm done mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna do I'm going to do a different profession and, and I'm just going to teach like two or three times at this mm -hmm. academy and mm -hmm. that be it. And then I got lucky and I, I, I just, you know, all the planets were put in line for the first did you time. Have, did you kind of pers and started doing other things for a while then? Or no, like no, I did actually quit. I did actually present my letter of resignation be like, I'm done. Um, to, to the who? place where I was working at. I was <laughs> okay. working at this place and, and I was like, I'm done. I'm out. Okay. I don't mm -hmm. like where this is going mm -hmm. and, and I'm not going there. So I'm out mm -hmm. in six months, like after New Year's, I'm not going to be here. Mm -hmm. But it, pretty much at the same time, uh, I, I met my friend and, and my investor who's like, he's like, I have a dream. I really want to have a martial arts academy. I wanted that my entire life. I'm just not pretty much good enough for it. Can't put the time in. And I'm like, I really want that too. And, and I'm maybe not good enough, but I can put the time in. I just don't have the money. He's like, well, we got three out of three together. So let's build it. Mm -hmm. And we did. Yeah. You guys, but did. I was <laughs> literally giving up. I was like, okay, I'll just flip burgers then mm -hmm. you know, and not eat them. I'd actually have to sell them too. I have a theory and that is that because of martial arts, not being a, as big of a sport as football or as ice hockey or as a, the structure of like, you know, either you go, you pursue a, a, a sports career in something, and then there's there's a clear path. Like, mm -hmm. okay, I, I started playing, uh, not me, you start playing football, you get better, then you get a better contract, and then you can start earning money, like real money, pretty early if you're a decent enough mm -hmm. football player. So the path is pretty straight. Like, you, you know where where the next step is. Okay, I now play in Division Three, and then I get, you know, Fika pengar, like <laughs> yeah. mon mon money to buy some coffee. But then if I get a little bit better, I will, I will actually kind of, uh, maybe I don't have to work full time and then I get better and then I, I don't have to work at all. In martial arts, there's no path, pretty much. Yeah, but it looks like one of those Jackie Chan movies from the 80s where you're like on poles with spears underneath, you step sideways <laughs> yeah. and go, or, that's the path. Yeah, yeah, that's the path. So, but since there's no path, you need to be like super motivated. So we just keep doing it. Like there's no real, there's no thought process. Like I, short of my story, I, I, I I'm obsessed with martial arts. I, I need martial arts and I need to train. I need to, so, so there's, there's really no option to stop training. I like, if I, if I weren't able to 
live of it. Now I can. I can. I, that this is my work. I, I work with martial arts in some ways. But if if that wouldn't have been the case, then I would just keep training. I wouldn't stop mm-hmm. training just because I couldn't live of it. Yeah. But if you're if you're a football player and then you, you there's no the, then the kind of the okay I didn't get to the professional level you would probably stop pretty much playing. stop well at least on a professional level mm-hmm. you would stop playing football. That's true. So uh, just uh, I think it's a kind of uni- it's a good thing that there's so not so much money involved because then we have you have a lot of dedicated people that just keep on training for many many years without even considering you know will. Did you consider working with this, or what? You know, did you want to make money? No, I just kept on training. Like you, both you guys say this. I yeah. just, I just, I just want to train jujitsu or boxing or whatever it is. Yeah. Now, now there's some money involved, of course. Now it's, you know, it's what? getting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't heard? Wait, what? <laughs> I did not just, get that just, memo. Just, just around the corner. Right. Ralph, did you? Um, you, you, I mean, you never actually. Uh, you, there was ne- never an option for you to work with jiu-jitsu or like you, you you of course earned some money by teaching and stuff like that but mm. you always pursued like a another career of that yeah no i mean um like uh, to say that uh, like martial arts saved my life is probably an exa- exaggeration for me but it it increased the quality of my life to uh, um, a degree i would never be able to achieve without it so mm. Um, I mean, we used to compete in sports, jiu-jitsu with sports, uh, like Ingmar our instructor used to say, we were a little bit bad at everything. We're, we're not the best at karate, we're not the best at judo, we're not the best at Brazilian jiu-jitsu, but we're kind of good at everything, and that together becomes a pretty strong it thing. It was actually Musa that said it the first time, but... Uh, <laughs> oh, it was? Okay, yeah. okay. sorry, yeah, sorry, sorry Musa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think, um, uh, for me, it's been the same thing. I've, I've, I've never done something completely 100%, like I said, but... Um, the combination of with my work and like programming and computers and like used to compete in computer games also. I, I love competing, but um, it's never been about like this one thing that would make me happy. It's more like a lot of puzzle pieces together. Mm. And martial arts has made me be able to appreciate all those puzzle pieces so much more than I would be able to uh, without it because uh, martial arts taught me patience for to begin with, to, to look at something uh, many years ahead to plan like to accept that this is not going to come like a like a fast reward it's going to take time and it's going to be rewarding in the end mm. and that has affected every aspect of my life regardless of what i do and uh, relationships or martial arts or programming or whatever you do so yeah so that that's been my experience i mm. didn't save my life like in, like in that uh, it's, it sounds too exaggerated for me to say but it, it, it's kind of hard to say it when you live in Sweden that yeah. you just saved your life. Yeah. I would <laughs> right. have done some dumb shit. I wouldn't yeah. have done. Yeah, you, done, you, you would have done no, dumb shit. People, yeah. It, it yeah. probably is true. I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like maybe. The, people have took a very wrong path, but mm. I, that was never an option for me either. So it's I can't say that either, but it's, I mean, my life is now at a 10 that I probably would never be able to achieve that without like martial arts because mm. that mindset and all those uh, great things that like you and uh, Ingmar and Musa, by the way, yeah. also has, has taught me. No, I, I have to kind of um, take that back because, of course, it can save. A, we save a lot of lives. Mm. What I meant is that there's a difference between living, I guess, where you grow up, yeah. uh, because like the there's no in Sweden. There's a lot of social net. How do you say networks or social? Yeah, there's there's a lot network, of uh, yeah. safety there, there's nets. safety nets in Sweden. So of course we save a lot of lives, and people would have done a lot of stupid shits mm-hmm. if it weren't for academies like ours. But I, the, what I meant is that there's a difference between growing up in a favela in, in, yeah. in Rio and, and then the, suddenly you start doing jiu-jitsu and start pe- people start believing in you and then you get a chance maybe to travel and th- that it's a yeah. I, there, there's a big difference yeah. in my mind like yeah. between Sweden and and, and especially like, like everybody talks about mental health and all mm-hmm. of that right and like especially like you saw yeah how much people missed it on yeah. this time did you yeah. guys got did you guys close down here and at any point yeah, yeah. we yeah. did we, we closed for seven weeks all when right. covid hit so it was like totally closed here it was me and then the the, the girls in the reception for seven weeks two first weeks was kind of funny (laughs) like that we still had stuff to do but then you know after some weeks it was uh, boring like so many people came and talk like oh i need to i miss it so much it's good for my i think they just appreciate what they had that maybe they take it for granted took it for granted like you got the academy was locked for almost a year you know and i was even talking to someone but for basically for a year and then we open for the kids on and off and like the guys couldn't train but it made me think at the point that 
like it's, it's not only jiu-jitsu of course but i think martial arts has its power too you know but so many people that comes like what about people that the guy was making an interview for for a, he was making a study or whatever and you heard a lot of people saying because he was talking to people in the academy too you know that they felt dep- depressed because they didn't have jiu-jitsu you yeah. know you know eh? but it, there's a point that also that i mean what how i see it is that okay if you're depressed just because you're not doing jiu-jitsu jiu-jitsu is not your problem hmm. you know jiu-jitsu should make you ready to go through this through these times you know to this what you have to go through you yeah. know the martial arts you know so that's something you know is you appreciate that people miss it that much but there's some kind of like i think you're you kind of people are sometimes using jujitsu like medication mm. when they should be using jujitsu like nutrition exactly you should feed off of it so that you can survive without nutrition for a while mm. but if you use it to medicate something else when you take that away whatever problem you had is going to be right back very exactly. true very true so and I then it's, it's, it's also nutri- very it's my fuel it's yeah. not my medicine two different things yeah. because if you're using it as medication and then you have a have a bad sparring session or whatever is going to increase your yeah the, 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 that, bad, yeah. the bad feeling a lot mm, like yeah triple it <laughs> yeah no people should use it like yeah, medi- very and true. i think a lot of people found it because they were looking for medication but if you spend long enough in it in the right environment i think you're going to start using it like your fuel it will be your nutrition mm. exactly. like i feed off of it naturally yeah. right yeah that, that's it's just gonna that's how it is yeah, yeah. Let's talk about injuries. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Speaking of nutrition. <laughs> All right. So How many anyway. hours do you have? <laughs> yeah. We have, uh, we have as long as we need. We uh, need. I Let's have not uh, injured my... Uh, <laughs> the white of your eyes okay exactly. okay, okay. Let, let's white, let, no, actually, let's walk yeah. through the body okay who who has pain in left shoulder hands yes. up I, I, if i, I could lift I'm my arm my I would. <laughs> <laughs> left shoulder okay right who shoulder hand up? <laughs> uh, yeah, knees Teta? no my knees no? are fine really? knees are fine my knees are fine your, your back wow. congrats my back is a little bit stiff in the lower back but okay n- not much nothing and i actually i well, heard, described you before as Uh, the stiffest, uh, the stiffest cat. cat ever alive. <laughs> yeah, he, like, when he moves, like, he's so stiff, but when he spars, he looks like a cat. Nah. Yeah. Like, what the hell? But, but uh, <laughs> my, my lower back a little bit, I hurt. I just like have some wear and tear in my joints. Uh, so I had a... Uh, you did what? Wear, you... wear and tear in the, some joints. Oh, just wear, wear and tear. tear, okay. So I have problems on my elbows, like from like boxing and pairing, like yeah. yeah you're deep boxing deep. now also. We seen yeah, the no, we seen I, the pictures. I, I did that before a lot, but okay. But, but uh, and then teaching too much. I never went back to train for me myself. But uh, now during the pandemic, I had some of the MMA guys still had to fight, so they still had to train. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, I was there coaching grappling, and I said, like maybe i can help them with the strike you know so mm-hmm. i start to get it by myself and to be able to help them a little yeah. bit more so now i keep going it's like uh, kit, kit dale is also yeah. doing yeah. a lot of boxing yeah, right yeah. now cool, yeah cool, cool, and he's cool. doing good yeah, yeah. it looks That's good, good. Cool. shout out to kit yeah. very good so my elbows were like i just had a elbow surgery to take some uh, like um have some bone fragments and some calcification to like a big piece of calcification right so my elbow i, I was losing movement on my elbow mm-hmm. so my arms are even mo- losing muscle mass because i couldn't activate the tricep from the bicep properly because it had no Finally. Fine range of motion <laughs> <laughs> <Finally>. <laughs> but now i fixed it i got the, i had a surgery here just need surgery on the other mm-hmm. surgery on the other side but luck and somewhere and turn the neck and but you've been pretty fortunate then that, i mean you obviously you yeah, you always but, been but, very fit but, and but strong I also, so i also think that uh like starting jiu-jitsu really young my body adapting a different mm. way maybe and i think that the time that i start training the game was not so damaged it was a lot of like self-defense leverage yeah. understanding to keep yourself safe that mm. was always a one priority you know to don't uh to understand when you're pushing your body a little bit and don't push to try to don't push too much in order to it doesn't it it's not worth to injure a your body in order to just do a technique if the technique is costing your body the technique's not good enough it's mm. not, it's yeah. not proper you know mm. so i always had this in mind i always had this so that's how i grew up in the sport so mm. so maybe that helped me a lot you know but you have a like a 12 14 year old that's inverting over his neck and like and that's exactly. how it, and then it's grabbing like, uh, the lapel yeah. and twisting yeah. his whole body from outside and have that pressure and then he's training with a bigger guy that's like mm. you're not thinking about how to be 
to be that bigger guy yeah, yeah. we never were before. there I was never there either in the beginning I went those like weird things I waited until I'm four years old now I'm inverting and doing <laughs> 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 yeah, great, but, uh, great way to do it but that's but, fine you have to do, you have to do it we just not I just mm. think that you just need to understand that like, I think I understand that that technique is costing for an injury or something yeah. you, you, you need to go back and, and and rearrange the technique and see what you're doing wrong there it shouldn't be like that maybe I shouldn't be doing this on this this position or I shouldn't be doing that guy that's much bigger than me or whatever I, no? I never feel so old as when I need to kind of tell the students the how you you to can affect you and like uh, you, you you kind of try to teach them to train smarter and yeah. you know because uh, that, that's that's when i feel the oldest like you know, <laughs> it's like you, you're like all right well this can happen and please look at me and please, please learn from my mistake yeah. that speech but then you feel like so old but it's it i think also yeah, you have you to have say to it say yeah that. it's so you important it, yeah, yeah. Well, i wish i wish somebody had like been more stricter with me because I was I I really enjoyed training. I trained a lot, and but I I didn't know anything about training at that time when I when I had my kind of ten years of competition career. Like in the end, I started learning more about nutrition, and I needed to have a strength at uh, especially a strength program. I need to be, to get stronger in order to because I was doing sport jiu jitsu, mm. and it's a lot of like you know kicking and punching and throwing. And there's it's it's a lot of wear and tear on the body. So I wish that somebody had kind of been more stricter with me yeah. uh, it's like well you can't do that that's stupid or you need to do that first or mm -hmm. I, I so Ingmar was amazing and all in everything that he did but it, we never had really that kind of relationship where he was involved in my other training than jiu-jitsu so then I had I I kind of wandered away a little bit and trained and hurt myself but a little here's bit. a cool thing from from uh, and correct me please if I'm wrong but Jiu-Jitsu in Rio especially, when it originated into the second or third generations, we would be Murilo mm. and, and the body and the guys coming from Carlson who got his black belt from, from the OGs, so to speak. It was a health system. It was about sustainability. It's not a fad. The Gracie diet was actually one exactly. of the first things they did. And it was supposed to give fitness to, from the beginning, before Carlson opened up to the favela guys, it was for, for aristocrats and bureaucrats with money who wanted longevity and sustainability. They wanted to do it for life. Mm. So, like Tata said, we, we were kind of taught, me too, and I forgot that because I'm an idiot, <laughs> but we were kind of taught from our generation to still look at, at correct body mechanics what's the correct frame how do i alleviate pressure we talk about creating space but we don't keep that space with the frame anymore we keep that space with with cross training and crossfit maybe that's not really the frame you mm -hmm. understand so we were actually drilled in that by our teachers mm -hmm. from that generation because it was still like just one generation away today it's a sport and people forgot sustainability and talk about the sport career I mean, I mean, you can listen to to High Voltage, be like, yeah, we're gonna see how long his career gonna be, talking about Leandro Lo, who's messed up everywhere, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it, it's because now you you develop your jujitsu to have a career, a sport career, and you're already talking about when he retires, this and this. The word retires did not exist no. with our idols. We, you don't retire from jujitsu. Are you kidding me? You retire when you're like, okay, they're gonna put your belt on your coffin when you die. That's mm -hmm. retire. Mm -hmm. So the sustainability. Was well, you different. you retire from a elite competition career, maybe. Yeah, but, but you probably don't have the same will to train as you had. You don't have the same pleasure, maybe. Exactly, I think so. You're all wrecked and like you can't mm -hmm. perform as you're performing. You base your game in your right. Yeah, and the body. But honestly, I remember from from my trips to Brazil, it was I was still amazed. I am to this day. I was amazed at the fact when, for instance, that time at Axe. Where, where we met, yeah. there was this guy, can't remember his name now, who was a black belt, older guy from, from there, who who was like, he was small, he was like probably a Ralph size. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyway, he wasn't really small though, he was short, like Ralph. But but <laughs> but that being said, he also was like Ralph because he had this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taller than all of you. Yeah, no, he had this half guard that was insane. Yeah. It was insane. Like and he mine? Had yeah, <laughs> like, yeah like, well, it was insane and he had this knee brace on that was like worse than any of my knee braces and he was like honestly probably 70 and he just fucked my game up i was like what the hell i'm mm -hmm. 30 years old i'm supposed to get a medal in worlds what the hell mm -hmm. i was a brown belt and i wasn't that bad you know so like 
how is he just fucking my game up? I just can't put pressure on this old man. But he had his framing system down to a point. Mm. He was very far from retired. Mm. Mm. And that was the cool part. It's like, and I can tell you about 10 or 15 of those guys, like, you know, way older than I am now, gray hair everywhere and be like, but they would mess everywhere. People. I don't know that part, but but <laughs> they would mess people up for like two or three rounds. But that's mm. the thing. Once you go to Brazil, there, since the sports is being for yeah. month, you have the opportunity to see that exactly, and also see the guys performing. You know, you could see that, and you could see it. I could see that in the room, and then at the same time, on the side was like Libório, Murilo, yeah, Amori Bittati, Carlão Barreto. They're going at it, Valdimo. Everybody going at it, and going hard, and things like that. And actually, these older guys that maybe we're not performing performing that way actually take come here son let me show you this exactly Bam. you do exactly. more like this and they, mm -hmm. they would be a little so you, you had a little bit to make so so since the sport is a little bit I, i'm looking forward to the time that you know we're going to be 70 on the mat yeah mm -hmm. and there's going to be this guy wanting to compete and we're going to say like okay that's beautiful that's very good but, but let me show you this like yeah. come here <laughs> you know like mm -hmm. understand yeah. this yeah but that's what and i more saying because you also many times like oh have you uh, have you retired it's, it's like I'm, not, I'm never going to retire. No, I'm, yeah, exactly. I'm just not competing right now. Yeah. So, yeah. But don't mm. stop asking me when I'm retired. Yeah. Yeah. How beautiful Has it been worth be it? I mean, if he comes back. No. Oh, yeah, that would be. Oh, oh, that you know, you know, oh, give me chills. Yeah. yeah. Back, yeah. Okay, I, I, I think the pandemic kind of ruined it because it felt like he was actually about, you know, he was mm. training to compete and then the pandemic hit and then, you know, maybe now he. I don't know. Same again. This thing actually happened in Abu Dhabi 2017 in Finland. When Celsius Cel 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 yeah, came Cel back, Good friend and, of mine. and that guy, he retired from competition in in early two thousands. He won mm -hmm. worlds in I don't know two thousand three four maybe. He, he and, won like many times. Yeah, and then he retired. Yeah, and he was a gi specialist, and yeah. he came back to ADCC, and he's not big. He fought like, Kasai first, I remember, yeah, and then did really good, and then yeah. messed people. Yeah, up yeah. With old school diamond shaped square base, two elbows tightening in. It's like everybody was trying. This wasn't like Danner guys trying to invert it. He was like, yeah, okay, but this is this is old school jujitsu. So you guys are just gonna have to tap. Yeah. <laughs> we're like, okay then. So that yeah. works. That was to me. I was live there. I was like, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. Speaking about comeback. So see, yeah. So see, yeah, like so the, the, but the retiring like, part. I'm not sure that retiring yeah. part is in yeah. there. You know, exactly. has has it been worth it? I mean. You obviously you you haven't had that much um, injuries, but you still had some. You had a, mm. like there's there's been this you know you have this pain, and then you kind of all right. I take some painkillers, and then I rest for a little bit. But the, the jujitsu bug is like it's so hard. You need to train. But has there ever been a time where uh, maybe I'm speaking on like in my well, in my mind because I had some moments where I'm like, man, I have so much pain right now. It's like I there's I'm, so much pain in my body. It's like, I I really should because if I stop doing jiu-jitsu, the pain goes away. So then my wife tells me, "Well, you see the pattern here. <laughs> <laughs> like, you see that now you haven't been training for three weeks and you feel great and you know you can do this and that." And I was like, "Yeah, but I will start yeah, training jiu-jitsu soon you again." Always come back. Yeah, you, you always, always come, come, back. come back. It's like, like but you always come I mean, I, I told this story to you when we were teaching. Like, I, I was here working Monday. We were gonna have the classes Tuesday and um, Wednesday for the instructors mm -hmm. course. So there's like intense days, and then this whole camp, and I want to train with you and everything. So I was like, on Monday, I was thinking. I, I actually sitting here thinking, I, I'm not gonna train today because the chance of me hurting myself would be so bad. Okay, so that that's a clear thought in my mind, and then. At 6.30, I'm kind of kind of done with doing what I should done. So I do. So I go out to the mat and then start people start going in. And then it's like, oh, there's that guy, there's Frederick, That's there's cool. a, yeah, and there's then so many good ten guys min, here. Ten days. minutes later, I have suddenly, you know, put on my gi and then I'm sparring. Yeah. <laughs> and then I hurt my neck and then I woke up the next morning, I couldn't barely lift my arm, and I'm like, mm. I'm stupid. Yeah. <laughs> but no, we all you, you, yeah. you, pass, you pass that point to you, right? Your body's kind of already you you paying for you should be happy for what your body gave to you right that i love that picture that you have there like that picture when you yeah. celebrating you know yeah, yeah so imagine what you have to go through to get to that point you mm -hmm. know and that, yeah. that's what you're giving like, talking about performance again mm. for example Liborio, my teacher he when he was fighting in 2015 he also had problems like he started to have hernias on his back you know but he was kind of reckless training to like a tank so when you're training there and like I was complaining about it. I was asking about his back. Say, don't don't ask me about it. No. So a couple of years, not the year after, he came to visit me back in Norway. 
And it was like getting out of getting out of the bed, like traveling. He's like, oh, my earners are bad. So he has like seven or eight earners on herniated discs on his back. Mm. Seven or eight. And then during the training, to the training camp, he broke his wrist. And he kept training there. And he fought with the broken wrist. So now his wrist just moves just, just a little bit like this, you know? And he's on his 50s. You know? yeah. <laughs> and he gets up, he puts his gear on, he sits on the mat with us. He shows the techniques and he's trying to do a position sparring a little bit and then suddenly he wants to do a round or two and then he keeps walking around. Blah, blah, blah. Goes back home like, oh. There's no quitting there. Let's that's no. that's, no, that's it. Uh, yeah. That's how it is. Have you ever, because you had a major knee surgery three years ago. I had, uh, yeah, I had since 2000 and I think it was 16, I've had six knee surgeries. <laughs> So that was actually plenty of them, but the first but one. The was, last one was kind the of the last one was was big. Yeah, yeah, but it was expected. You know, it was expected. I knew early. Were you worried that you, because, as I understood it, it was kind of like, if this goes bad, then you will probably not be able to to train jujitsu in a way yeah. that you've been. So yeah. were you worried at that time, like? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Worried. Yeah. Of course. I was not worried that I wouldn't train jujitsu because I would. Yeah. I was worried about <laughs> what's my style gonna be like. You know, <laughs> how's my style gonna be? Um, I have a pretty shitty guard to start with. It's probably gonna get worse with just one <laughs> leg. How the fuck do I pass guard with one leg? You know, it was just pretty much that. But then again, I kind of remember that guy I told that messed me up at Axe. He had one leg and he was like twice my age. Something. Mm. Mm. I could probably still pull, you know, some sneaky loop choke yeah, or yeah, something. He did. Yeah. So yes, I was worried, but but there's also the the aspect that you you have this as your profession. You work yeah, with jujitsu. That jiu -jitsu. Me up though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because yeah. yeah, that is what scares me. I'm 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 very much aware of the fact that um, I'm closer to fifty than forty. Mm. And, and my body for not having trained smart and for having done other martial arts uh, before jiu-jitsu and for having done after entering in those, trying to specialize in wrestling. Wrestling is not as sustainable as jiu-jitsu. Mm. Um, I messed up my body a lot. Mm. And also when we started doing leg locks, we still had shoes on. So, so my cruciate ligaments with heel hooks, they're messed up, you know, mm, it, yeah. it's, it's, so I wouldn't blame jiu-jitsu, I would, blame other forms of grappling and stupidity mm. uh, but my body's messed up mm. so i know that that being closer to 50 than 40 i don't have it in me to perform that much anymore mm. but i also understand that for me to be a jiu-jitsu businessman i still need to be able to perform i need to be able to spar somebody mm. good for at yeah. least a round or two yeah you know for for Cre credibility basically i don't have a million medals i don't have you know all these things i'm not on bjj heroes i don't have that part so i need to be able to to teach in a way where people appreciate it mm -hmm. but i also need to be able to still spar people to the point where i'm not destroyed in 30 seconds so that did mess we, me we up talked a bit head. about about this a little bit during the the course and i i kind of did the comparison if you're you can be a, what do you call it, javelin? Yeah. yeah. Javelin, you can be a, because I, I heard this story about this Finnish javelin uh, trainer that he, that I was um, studying uh, when I was younger uh, for two years. And then there was this guy that was a javelin thrower and he was really good. And he said the best instructor he ever had was a Finnish javelin instructor. And he, the only thing he did was he was sitting on his chair with a whistle. pretty much a whistle. Mm -hmm. And he never, ever, ever th showed him how to throw the javelin. He, he couldn't throw the javelin anymore because he was older, but he was the best trainer he ever had. Is martial arts, and th then I did the comparison when we were teaching the course, that yeah. it, it's it's kind of hard in jiu-jitsu to be that javelin uh, instructor because you pretty much need to be able to kind of show some of the moves, and especially like you mentioned now, you it's good if you can also spar a little bit with your with your students yeah so is there a question in this i don't know uh i mean like what would you have done if you if you're not were not able to spar anymore how would you solve that um to be honest mm -hmm. i would have sparred <laughs> <laughs> yeah in I've, some I've way done that every single yeah. time when they when i did my when first would people thing. start taking it slow with us 
Like, <laughs> are you kidding? I mean, I take it slow with you every day. So <laughs> I don't know what you're uh, when is when that's that's gonna happen? Uh, oh. I don't know. I think they already did. They just don't want to tell me. <laughs> I think they already did. I have right. some students now. I'm like, I can feel that you're letting me off the hook right now. Oh. Yeah, I'll 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 take it as an act of love. But I will Such kill you. Such disrespect. <laughs> yeah. Such disrespect. Exactly. Man. Please. Please. just run over me and just the, the first choke me thing out I and... learned was to tap. Trust me, I have not forgotten how. To <laughs> it's not the just first make, and the last time. Huh? Just make me tap. Don't worry about it. it, it That's uh, it. Yeah, I don't want them to take it easy for me either. Yeah. Don't no, lie to me. No. Don't li exactly. No. Just no. don't lie to me. Right. At least not. No, to but my you, face. you just you just don't want those, uh, you know, hundred kilo white belts uh, throwing you off the, like. There, there, need, there no, needs to be. I don't want that. You, you don't want that. So uh, I mean, we try to teach that. Like it, it's called manners. <laughs> yeah. Have you have you ever heard? Sense. Have you ever heard the story in in Kodokan um, about um, you know that in in Kodokan, in Jap Japan there's always like the three o'clock sparring in the afternoon and then you know people get there and there's like three hours sparring or four hours. This is just a open mat. And then a lot of the older Japanese judo instructors, they go, they're like sixth, seventh, eighth, nine degree black belts. They're really, really old. And then these two gringos shows up. I don't know if this is a true story, but it's just uh, how, how it works. And then he kind of invites or asks one of the older uh, guys, like, you know, to, 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 to train, spar, huh? to, to spar. And, you know, I mean, even for asking, that's maybe not the way to do it, but he doesn't just know the, 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 the routines there. So he asks him to spar and then he throws him like, like he's the white belt, he's the 100 kilo white belt, just throws this older guy. And all the Japanese black belts, like comp competition guys go, they look at each other <laughs> and they have this, you know, oh, they start and then they just go and they just kill Mom. him. You know, they just yeah. go after him like, oh, I want to rest now. No, 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 you're not resting no. until, we're, <laughs> until we're done. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. but we, we we need to learn this uh, behavior in the academy. How to I think it's train built, with? Um, I think it's built into the academy, right? I think you, it is. You have to build it up. Like, you, you also don't want to be the guy that, like, yeah, it's, it's hard, right? Because you're sparring all the time. But people have to understand, like, what is a uh, what are the limits? Again, it's common sense, as you said. You know? mm. Like, but I think we build it up there. Yeah, yeah. I hope so. Mm. Yeah, I, I, hope think, so. I think we build yeah. it up. I think it's up to us now that are on this point now to build it up yeah for the people to understand because mm. especially like if, when everything started here basically was just young people that were training yeah. right so that passed. nobody cared about <laughs> no, no. <laughs> nobody cared <laughs> nobody cared about it so you have even today people starting in deep into their 50s yeah right starting to train in there so it should be able everybody should be able to you know yeah. get I think something sustainability from. is a really important word yeah. i try to teach jujitsu that's sustainable mm -hmm. A lot now. I, I I really try to. I will only teach and coach sport athletes who actually want to compete. Things that fall outside of sustainability that have, in my opinion, like okay, here's a strategy, here's a game plan, here's something that you could probably do for the next five years. Mm -hmm. But that's because you have told me that your goal is you need to perform here. But if you're like, yeah, I want to do, um, you know, we're not even go. We're not going to go into this. We'll look at it or everything, but we're not going to exaggerate time and specialize in this part of the game because it's not sustainable. Mm. I want sustainable jiu-jitsu. Mm. A good That's example right. is, is the guy who, who, who gave me my blue and purple belt, Alexandre Paiva, Gigi. That guy has six vertebras in his spine that are joined together. Six. That's why he walks the way he walks. Crook there. And he's also the guy that Hodger Gracie went to train with for his last fight with Bushesha. Because that guy's jujitsu today is still bomb. Like mm. he, he will submit people. And Hodger is like, yeah, he's really hard to, to control. And, and if he passes my guard, he stays there. Mm -hmm. And that's Hodger. <laughs> that's Hodger. And Paiva weighs like, he's like a medium guy. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And yeah. he's also in his 50s now. Yeah. You're like, okay, so that's sustainable jiu-jitsu. That still works. I'm so happy I don't have any back injuries whatsoever. I had like mm -hmm. a problem with the neck for a short while, but that, like that passed. But I, no knee stuff, no stuff like that. It's just... Upper just body soft bit. tissue in your face that's been messed yeah, up in exactly. your ears. <laughs> no, but I, I mean, I have the shoulders there. I, I got an option like two years ago to like to stop like martial arts in general. So I, my shoulders so bad after mm. Marfrey threw me there eight years ago. Yeah. Um, that's a great idea, by the way. Go up, open weight class, Michael Marfrey, and think I'm going to throw him. I'm going to like. 
That was your mindset. He won't expect this. He won't expect this. He won't expect this. I'm I'm like, I'm going to do something. I'm I'm just going to surprise him because he was so relaxed, especially against our, us, uh, like, lighter guys. He was like, just like, not opening his eyes, basically, just like, whatever. No, whatever. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm like, I'm going to surprise him. And then uh, Uchimata from hell. And, uh, <laughs> oh, you surprised him. He's like, holy yeah. shit, we're doing my game. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, that fucked But my other shoulder is also bad. But I have the same like elbow that you have also. Yeah, yeah. Like, I can touch this side on left side here. This That's is, exactly, this yeah. is Max. That's I, it. Uh, I can't go wow. any further. Yeah. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we got some uh, nice comments here. Jenny, that's uh, she's actually in the board here in the Nakadoji. She says, it's a uh, fantasy and nice to hear and how good the wall behind us look. Mm. Yeah, it does. It does look good. Shana Kompis. And then Daniel Ru says, thank for sharing. Looking forward to tomorrow. Yes. Yeah, we're looking forward to tomorrow as well. Um, and Tony says, this was a great podcast. Legend. Legends at the table. P.S. Ralph looks not tall, <laughs> not <laughs> tall in my chair. Yeah, See you guys tomorrow. I think they're letting us know that we should maybe round up yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, <laughs> based probably. on the comments, and it's getting hot in here as well. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty warm. So um, I want to throw in one thing. Though. Yeah, you talked about financial. Mm-hmm. I want to say that I have not made a lot of money choosing what I have chosen. I would have made more if I had finished law school or med mm-hmm. school or been a civil engineer. But I do consider myself very rich. Mm, I honestly do. I consider yeah. myself extremely rich. Yeah. I have things and I have experienced things and I have seen and lived and and, and gone through things that money can't buy. Mm. I don't care how rich you are, money can't buy that. And I'm happy for that to a very high degree. Mm. And I would not have done that without jujitsu. So so financially it may ha- not have been the best ride. I'm doing okay. I'm not mm. going to complain today. It's a different currency. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. but, talk but about. exactly. But it's a different currency. And the currency that I have is... is I'm, I'm Jeff Bezos. Up in this <laughs> I'm just saying. But it's not no, but th- this yeah. is a very interesting topic. So let's spend a little bit time yeah. on this because that was like the, my third wheel of, of the conversation. It's and I, what you're saying is beautiful. I love that. And I I, I agree. And uh, But it's, it's also, you come to a point where like, you need to put food on the table. You need to. Uh, yeah. You have kids. There, you have goals in life other than you know just training jujitsu. You have a partner that you live with, and maybe you know. In yeah. your case, she also trains. But there's. You always come to a point, I think, where where there's like I need to choose now. Yeah. Is jujitsu? I mean, it's like if you compare it to an uh, you you achieve you you want to be an MMA fighter. And then you you try and you I mean, I mean Connor maybe it's a good example. What if what if Connor wouldn't have made it? You know he was kind of the on the on the yeah. brink of you know there there's there comes a time when it was like I cannot do this anymore because I'm not making any money. Yeah. And 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 I started with saying I think that you guys would have done if you have chosen anything else because you jiu-jitsu obviously it's not the best. Uh, thing to do if you want to make a lot of money no. you would have done well uh and it would, with anything you have chosen so was there ever a time where i cannot do this anymore you you mentioned a little bit yeah. about that time in 2014 where like you know yeah i was can't, about yeah. to 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 go back to just train mm. and that would be like the soccer player who never made it yeah be like yeah i'll just you know i'm gonna do something else yeah but but honestly no no i just this is what i do yeah this is this is my nutrition and and everybody needs to put money on the table for the, for their family and it but you also need to be alive to do that mm-hmm. and mm. and this is my life yeah so yeah. i need to put food in my mouth to be able to work so that i can sustain everybody around me and this is my nutrition yeah that's you could awesome. just marry rich perhaps <laughs> That's yeah, <laughs> so a lot of jujitsu guys don't yeah. succeed in that because we're we don't have a real job anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Get a, that, what's your ex- that, that, experience about this? I mean, I was. It's hard to say that you don't have an ambition to, you know, mm. as you say, you need to be able to provide your family and things like that, mm-hmm. right? But you. Like, as he said, like it, everything that he said, I agree, and it's beautiful, but it's not for everyone, right? No. It takes a special kind of person to be able to see these and appreciate that, mm. you know? Uh, but you go into this business, you know that you're not going to be 
you yeah. know you know that it's in plus of the other, uh, other than, than the financial side it's like to get to that point it's a lot of sacrifices a lot of things and it takes time for you to see that in a way this all the yeah. sacrifices were worth it right so you go there you know that you you're not gonna get rich you're not gonna be buying apartments and and flying first class everywhere you know like what we do we we drive a borrow an electric car to drive <laughs> and you, maybe you lay down the mats and you b b keep living like this you know yeah. you upgrade a little bit of course with time mm. but uh i always believed that i would be able to live of it you know to, mm. to be able to live of it and yeah mm. and try to consolidate me but it's always a it, it's a constant fight right yeah mm. at the same time that you're fighting to on the mats you're fighting to learn you're fighting to teach you also fight on this side too. So it's a constant fight. You need to have this fighting spirit every day in the morning, yeah, yeah, yeah. every day in the morning, every night, and you go to bed, you need to understand that it's gonna be this fight. And you need to, again, you need to be able to go to all the areas because if it's only Jiu Jitsu itself in a way, like even your students are gonna pass you, right? Yeah. So you need to be able to offer all this knowledge, all this experience, all these, you know, different point of views that you have, especially with experience and all of that, right? Because your students are coming, even your own students are gonna come to catch up with you and they're gonna pass you, you know? They yeah. should. Yeah. You say that like it's something that everybody thinks, but we just had this course for instructors. We're like, you know what? You need to have the goal to, to make your students better than yourself. Mm. Not everybody understands that. But for you, it, it's it's completely natural. It's like a self-giving. You don't even reflect on it. You just state the fact that your students will surpass you. Definitely. That's yeah. what makes you great, man. Yeah, it exactly. Is. Because, because a You're lot so, of people... There's, there's so many similarities with Teta as with Ingmar. Yeah, yeah, because, Ingmar. You, yeah because you're... Uh, I mean, now I have the opportunity to say this, but I'm so impressed by you in the way that you handle yourself on the mat together with your students. When I, I follow you guys on Instagram and like when I see, I, I get so inspired every time I see you guys when you oh, post stuff nice because there's such a, the vibe between you and you know your business partners and the, the, the students, it's amazing. I never seen you ever, maybe you don't show this but yeah. i've never seen you like because you you're so like people make fun of you and you know they put this this interview with oh, uh, yeah, hakim yeah, and you know yeah. when they like they make that's fun it. of you like in the podcast or whatever but you're always like you know you're always allowing this there's such an environment for them to kind of grow and and the day that they will surpass you that's going to be you know the natural step yeah, i have my nutrition every day yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. and i just it, it, I it's so inspiring yeah. to me i just well, want to say thank you because i um, and of course, it's where it comes from, right? Like, I mean, I grew up in Rio, like, and that's like, I, I was never like, how, how can I say the, the top dog? But I mean, like, team with the, like big names, and you have so much, so many people to look up to, you know. Mm. I never thought that I that I that I surpassed my my teacher, you know. I always think that you know I want to get half of what he is, maybe, you know. Like, yeah. That I'll be, I'll be happy with that. Uh, but uh, in a way, like, I mean. I grew up competing, winning, losing, you know, you get used to these things and this, this environment that it is, you know, and uh, my nickname is Tieta, man, that means tits. I grew up with people calling me <laughs> yeah. tits around, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I take myself serious almost, you know, like just because I was a chubby kid and stayed since I was like eight, nine years old, whatever, and I stayed forever. You yeah. know? Nicknames is a, it's a Latin American thing. You know, Bushesha, what it means. Big cheeks. Yeah, I remember that now when yeah. you said it. Yeah, big Greg cheeks. He's uh, yeah. lazy. Uh. <laughs> he's lazy, that guy. Yeah. Right. I don't know how my nickname became Playboy. I don't even <laughs> want to know, but that was what they called me. Before that, they called me Mr. Magoo. Mr. Magoo. <laughs> yeah, uh. Mr. Magoo was this old cartoon dude with glasses who, without his glasses, was blind, and yeah. he got into the shittiest areas of everywhere and somehow survived. And I got that after twice getting lost in Rio. <laughs> And this was before smartphones, so I called from a flip phone. It's like called, and they're like, "Don't move." <laughs> so I walked into this favela somewhere. I'm like, I don't really know where I am. And they're like, "This guy is Mr. Magoo." <laughs> <laughs> so, so the nickname part is you can't take yourself too serious. Oh, of you course not. And now Ralph yeah. is thinking about, you know, what Ricard really means, and then he's kind of making up some <laughs> joke about that it actually means stupid or something. Yeah, that's not it. Yeah. How, would you, Ralph? <laughs> How would you pronounce Ralph? How would you pronounce Ralph in Portuguese? Half, half, half card, or half tall. 
<laughs> yeah, so he's going right. to kill me tomorrow anyway. So. No, my, my Brazilian name is uh, Half Costa Carnival. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. actually a good name. Yeah. His, his, Half Half Costa. his middle Half name is Justa in Swedish. That Justa. our grandfather oh, yeah. was name was Justa, but then then he, they when they announce him in the speakers, they go Half oh, Costa. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Makes, Makes sense. I'll yeah, I mean, it scares my opponent because it sounds a bit Brazilian. Yeah. You know? yeah. It's like, oh, it's like the more names you have, like it's it, kind of yeah. Gracie to you because Ralph Gracie. Yeah. You have yeah. 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 Ralph thing. I mean, it, it's not about like Gringos at least. I mean, if you're fighting a uh, Brazilian or Portuguese guy, the more names they have, the, the more dangerous they are yeah <laughs> always it's always it's true, true. <laughs> It's like some people have like five names they call them up and like blah 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 and you're like fuck I'm gonna lose this <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna lose or, this or if they have one name yeah yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. you're like oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Did, you, did you guys see that Terere is now quitting like he uh, no f- sorry not Jacare, Terere Jacare sorry okay. Jacare, yeah. Jacare now he's kind of said no I'm done yeah. 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 talking about retirement or his yeah. body is yeah. done yeah. 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 yeah but he's gonna open an academy thing. he's gonna yeah, be teaching so he's gonna yeah. be training people that's I hope so I hope so I hope so that's it that guy, he was born for that. He was never going to stop too. No. No, they cannot stop. All right, gentlemen. It's been a pleasure talking to you guys. So much fun. And we're going to have uh, un- three more amazing days together. Training yes. and doing what we love and getting our making medication love or yeah. making love. What? what? We can do that. Jenna <laughs> <laughs> Compis. Jenna Compis. So I will put on the outro music. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for Thank uh, watching and listening. Thanks for all the... Um, nice words and um yeah we um we're gonna close now and then go and have some dinner cool sounds right. good let's go for it life is coming back to us Oof. we can spend time here and then we can go out to a restaurant and yeah nice. there's hope good ones <laughs> all right all right thanks okay bye-bye Oof.